the crater like the prophets once said Okay, so, so I got one question about these English language parasites. Uh -huh. In the Japanese version, is it Japanese parasites? Uh, no. It is because not. the whole, like, global language, Zero's language, it, it should be English globally. Yeah. But, like, the common language on the strut Stay back. is whatever it's language, you know, your copy is localized to. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they still did a Japanese dub for this. Yeah. So... No, no, it's still English, though. But wait, she's constantly breathing. <laughs> I think. She's either breathing 100% or 0% of the time. You go down there, and it is over. She doesn't breathe, per se. I think it's just because the, the, the parasites, she gives no them water, and then it... Respirates the body. Respirates for all her? the parasites get chlorined away? Uh, I guess... But also, her parasite's like... Oh god. <laughs> she's dead. She's dead. <laughs> we don't have to worry about her as the carrier for the English language strain because she's dead now. Yeah. Oh, we don't have to put the fake blood on you anymore. You got fucked up! Yep. See, I was gonna suggest... a long stick with a hook. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Can we can we fly a drone down there? Throw Fulton balloons at it and hope it latches on eventually. <laughs> Use your Fulton balloon launcher. <laughs> shoot the rocket fist and have it grab it. Yeah, just cover the rocket fist in chewing gum. <laughs> it's the wrong necklace. Do it again. Uh, this is just an animal cracker on a string, dude. What is it, Snake? It's you, telling Zadornov all of our secrets. <laughs> Are Cecile and Amanda doing okay? I wonder Surprisingly, why yes. Yeah, so, strangely enough, they're, yeah. They're better off than anyone in I'm that sorry, game, I'd say. My head hurts. Could you let me rest? Yeah, I guess Amanda and Cecile are the ones that basically got out unscathed. They, I mean, they both went back to their careers. I mean, Amanda's you know? brother died. Yeah, yeah. But like themselves at least, they're they're still fully intact. Uh they're they're not bent on revenge for the rest of their lives, I guess. I guess Strange Love could be fine too, but we don't really know what's the game just hasn't really mentioned She's her much. She's tied to Huey for the rest of her natural life. Yeah. So Sorry about all those burns, quiet. <laughs> It's okay. It, yeah. Her skin isn't real skin. It's all parasites. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, anyways, let's actually go get that AI pod. Hell yes. Hell yes. That means someone must have taken the body. But when I got there, everything was still as it was. Even Skullface hadn't been touched. I can't see a reason to sneak into a place like that and drag out the biggest, heaviest guy there. What are you getting at? A uh, free up energy? <laughs> got up and walked away. Just put that's that guy in, in, in a boiler, you put a turbine over that, you have solved world hunger. <laughs> Mira grew up in post-war Japan. Maybe that is why the song has that kind Enjoying of Enjoying Paz's music review column. Ago, I heard yeah. some <laughs> Japanese music called Enka, I think? It sounded this The way. Patriots suppressed all I knowledge of Pitchfork until they thought the world was ready. <laughs> why does my heart flutter when I think of him? It is embarrassing to be unable to control these emotions. There has to be a way to suppress it. To forget it. I would recommend you figure that out. Maybe that is what love deterrence is. Ah yes, if we love each other, we will surely die. <laughs> love will tear us apart. Original title, Love Deterrence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if Cecile ever, like, came across news articles or anything regarding, like, the mother base attacks and stuff and went like, Phew! <laughs> Dodged a bullet! She took the paper to the Parisian Café. It's like, I, I know those guys. <laughs> Why don't you believe me? I know those guys. I, I used to hang out there. We talked about birds. They seemed pretty all right at the time, but thinking about it, I don't know. There were some warning signs. There were some red flags. Yeah. Look, they just, they spent all the money they should have spent on, like, shielding uh, on the sauna. 
<laughs> they weren't great with the money. The Sono was heavily shielded, though. It was, it was fully lead-lined. Yeah. It was the safest place to be, actually. The sauna was the first stop on the inspection tour from Ground Zeroes. <laughs> it also turned out that the sauna was like load bearing because they put one C4 there and the whole strut just fell apart. At least Huey will be happy to have his family pictures back. I mean, I guess. He wasn't asking for them. He'll pretend to be happy to have his family pictures back. Oh, good! My son! Uh. My melon headed son. What's his name? I love him. Oh, is it is it your birthday again, boss? Hey. And funny enough, this does not set off an alert. <laughs> Soldiers don't give a shit. Boss, head for Yaha Obu's supply outpost and secure the man on fire's body. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive. And this man on fire who's been coming after us ever since you woke up? Well, that just might be what's left of our old friend, Volgan. Then why isn't he shooting electricity, <laughs> huh? <laughs> ever consider that? Yeah, I never deliberately pointed it out, but, like, if you look at the man on fire, like... He, he's just straight up wearing the outfit Volgan was wearing in the, the boss fight with him at the end of MGS3. Just, right. just with a cool mask. Uh, and, like, when I went into playing this game, like, I already knew this twist, because, like, you see the man on fire in, like, the trailers and stuff, and they didn't conceal his outfit at all. It's just like, oh, that looks like Volgan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's Volgan, everybody. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Would, could Volgan's electricity powers also be the results of parasites? <laughs> I'm assuming they are, because for all of uh, Skullface's words about the thirst for revenge keeping people alive, in his case, it was the parasites. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What if it's not, though? Like, how <laughs> cool would that be? Like, this game's plot is like, oh, all those weird magic people? Actually, they, they have a pseudoscientific biological explanation. Yeah. Oh, but this new guy? Actual straight-up magic. Just... <laughs> Just an undead fire wizard. He's a fucking ghost! Yep, that's a body. Mm -hmm. That cool bullet crown. <laughs> he's gonna pop the balloon. He's gonna flare up all hot. Mm -hmm. And the gas is gonna expand and the balloon's gonna pop. I won't believe he's gone until I hear him shout, Ya ha ha hui! <laughs> Also, it's been a while, but don't forget, he had a horse! Square gun here to save the day. <laughs> Shoot already! <laughs> What, are you going to CQC the 800 degree figure? <laughs> they actually modeled his face. Incredible. And what do they have to do to the horse in the mocap suit? Oh god. <laughs> Hope the ASPCA signed off on that yeah. one. Yeah. Stunt horse. Boss, and that's I'm the end of that. <laughs> We've received some new job offers. The details are on your iDroid. So yeah, his body gets stored on the quarantine platform. Uh, also we get 
Just look at all those cassette tapes we just got. Jesus. Yeah. Also, we got lots of squishy sounded people over here. Uh, when you Fulton the skulls, they get sent here. Oh. And they just... <laughs> when you said you got their parasites, I thought they just, like, died. No, uh, you fault them and, like, they just fucking... They just sit here. Back in 64, in Selenuarsk, you brought his plans for a utopia down in flames. He had plans for a utopia? He didn't, I wouldn't say he had a, pl a pl alive. plans for utopia. The day the research At all, really. The day holding Volgan burned down, a Soviet jumbo passenger jet happened to crash nearby. Far away to the north yes. of the Yes. Yes. This the plane dangling the plot point. Uh -huh. to the same facility. The plane fell to earth. Oh. Mm -hmm. The boy's body. That's why it matters. Body. So yeah, there you go. That that's what all that plane crash stuff at the very beginning of the first cut scene and the radio news broadcasts are all about. And yeah, I mean, uh, fucking obviously, ever since the first time we see him, the, the, the kid is psycho mantis, like... <laughs> <laughs> Being next to Skullface's brain all day long, Jesus Christ, poor kid. <sighs> that lust for revenge. That, maybe that's why he got his, his flair for the theatrical. <laughs> maybe. Skullface implanted on him as a, an impressionable child. Yeah. Oh boy. I hear you like games. <laughs> I like Kiss Me Kate. Back at it again. I think I've introduced too many episodes saying that, actually. Anyways, it's time <laughs> to do more story missions. How many episodes do you think just start with a, a moment of silence and then a we sigh? Uh, <laughs> That's the one. Too many. That's the, the sigh. <laughs> two containers and hidden in the jungle southwest of the mansion. You have to recover those containers. They have his to birth certificate. It's the first one down ever. Down <laughs> That's right. It's Still like active, sealed, like just vacuum death. sealed, because any elements no touching charged, it will just immediately vaporize it. My social security <laughs> number <laughs> is one. <laughs> this is a small mission, so we're just playing as Big Boss in the mm -hmm. parasite suit, which, when exposed to the light, I don't know about <laughs> the whole situation. <laughs> and there's the situation. Whoa. <laughs> Fresh from Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> or, wait, no, he was Jersey Shore? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Never yeah. mind. Fuck it. Start over. Oh, no. Take two. Let's go. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, a lot of the missions starting around now start to get, like, they're, they're kind of more bite-sized than a lot of the stuff uh, leading up to the end of Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. God, I still can't believe... I still can't believe the game, like, starts after the prologue with Chapter 1, and then you forget entirely about it because 40 hours of the game is Chapter 1. That does explain the phone I number down the back. I mean, it could roar like a dinosaur, but it should probably them. just be able to play, after like, all, commercials <laughs> for, for nukes. It runs really fast and trails a vinyl banner behind it. <laughs> oh man, it just like runs around all over the place and then like when warlords hear its music playing, it's just like, ooh, 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 it's the Metal Gear nuke thing. It's, it's the nuke man. It just plays, it plays turkey in the straw. <laughs> Every single support person in the entire Metal Gear franchise is completely unqualified to be a presidential candidate. <laughs> And even even beyond the whole like compromise of the military industrial complex, sure. Yeah. Like, look at Stillman. He has no soul. He has confessed yeah. to this on the record. <laughs> yeah, he, and it was look. It, it wasn't even that he was born without a soul. He had a soul and he murdered it. He just yeah. he admits to straight up killing souls. That's pretty bad. That that's disqualifying, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the only uh, Metal Gear support character that could possibly get my vote is Cecile, because she at least would respect the conservation lobby. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although she's not an American citizen, so... Mm, yeah, that's... Yeah. Oh, man. The only qualified person in all of Metal Gear to maybe be president. <laughs> Closest to being Closest. qualified. <laughs> Closest. Even the presidents in Metal Gear aren't qualified to be president. 
<laughs> well, one of them is a secret accelerated growth clone <laughs> that was training child soldiers. Oh, <laughs> oh man. It's getting misty. Yeah, I know. I, I did that. <laughs> I expelled the mist from my weird suit. Ocelot. So, uh, Code Talker, I keep forgetting to bring this up. Uh, Code Talker is voiced mm -hmm. by Jay Tavar, Tavare. Uh, he's okay. the dude who played Vega in the Street Fighter movie. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the characters, uh, well, certain characters are, if for this game, are face scanned. Um, mm -hmm. I believe some of the uh, faces for uh, random soldiers were actually just face scanned. Um, so when they modeled Code Talker, they just didn't like model an old, uh, an ancient old man face from scratch. They actually made a actual prosthetic on an actor and then scanned that prosthetic. Huh. All right. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting to see like you know like. Makeup and like makeup for like movies and, and prosthetics and stuff, yeah, like yeah. get used for a game instead. There's some like documentary footage somewhere out there that that shows them like applying the the prosthetic and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, fucking Michael Westmore reading the the character brief like. All right. Uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the new like Metal Gear info that came out is basically uh, many episodes ago. I talked about how like oh in some. Uh, trailer that was put out like a year or so ago for Death Stranding, it looked like you could briefly see a character that was being played by Stephanie Houston, the actor, mm -hmm. the actress for Quiet. I was like, oh, that's cool. They're bringing her back. Uh, turns out, no, what, that's, that, that is not her. They got somebody else for this, for this character. Uh, but it came out, Stephanie Houston said, oh, Kojima, like, even asked me if I wanted to play this, this character in his new game, and I said I was very interested. And then he never got back to me. <laughs> uh huh. That sucks. Let, 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 let me guess, that part is now played by a recognized Hollywood person that, you is, know, that does movies and things. So the character's name is Mama, because <laughs> that's how uh -huh. these name conventions work. Uh, I don't recognize her. I think she's been in some things, but it's not like uh, uh, the other actress who's like going to be in the next James Bond. Okay. It's not like they lured Ellen Page to do another video game <laughs> against her, her best instincts. Yeah, no. I, I, I'm curious if Ellen Page, like if she's approached for video games anymore, if she's just like, no. <laughs> not after Fool me once. Not after no. that David Cage thing. No. About anyway, that. that whole thing about like ghosting Stephanie Houston, that fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. That's an suck. asshole move. <laughs> Fuck yeah. you. Uh, Should have given the part to Sarah Bareilles, obviously. <laughs> well, there's some code talk to take and his research. Oh boy. Oh. Remember the guys what? you brought back from the base in Cuba? Yes, I do. <laughs> so yeah, still an S rank in uh, Intel. Um, yeah, wouldn't he like to think? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, generally at this point in the game, this is when you get Hideo. Um, you can actually get him earlier, and I'll still show this, uh, but if you had save data from Ground Zeroes, and you rescued Hideo in that one side mission, oh look, it's the finger, one of the guys we had to kill in Ground Zeroes. Yeah! Uh, and also the, and eye. the eye. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these special volunteers are guys I rescued from Ground Zeroes, and because they were in my save data, now I get them in this game. Boss, about that AI pod you retrieved from Emmerich's research facility. Guess what we found inside? A corpse. Human. The pod maintained a low internal temperature mm. the whole time, and very little outside air got in. Ah. Yeah. Down decomposition. Still, yeah, this part's skeleton. pretty weird. What the fuck, Huey? Huey! Fucking Huey! Huey? That's not even a robot! Strange Love was doing AI research in that lab. Why hide that until now? Why? Okay, so what? I wasn't working alone. You've got to understand. You do understand, right? Understand what? <laughs> So I kill. I wait. To bear, alone. So you didn't create the AI intended to drive Sahelanthropus. It was strange, love. Skullface was never in favor of AI control. So naturally they argued. Strange, love. She, 
Is his argument going to be that he couldn't get her out of the pod because of the legs? Mm. So you found her inside that pod after the fact. And you just left her body to rot in there. Or perhaps you put her in there afterward. I, I, I asked him not to take her away from me. So she was killed uh, by skull, uh, but you asked nicely, and he put her body in the AI pod for you. That's right. That's right? <laughs> <laughs> that you killed her. Me? Okay, I Huey needs a lot of things. Yeah. I didn't know you that one of them was a grief counselor. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. The, don't treat me like one of you. I, I can't just kill anyone whenever I feel like it. I'm a, a, a normal human being. You did blast Skullface point blank with a shotgun, though. <laughs> well, you know, he, he had to, to work up to it. I would never do that. What, you mean she killed herself? Yes. She, she climbed inside that pod and shut the door. It can't be opened from the outside. It, it That's not outside. true. That's unless they they changed the system that. from yeah. before. But herself. still, she got in when I wasn't looking and and suffocated. She'd often try to do things like that. <laughs> By the time I realized, and <laughs> it was a hobby of hers. What? I, I got scared and shut the pod again. I couldn't bring myself to open it back up. Because That's it doesn't right. open from the outside. Me? Kill her. <laughs> What is wrong with you? I see. Just tell me one more thing. Haven't you gotten enough today? Okay, okay, I see. It's a painful memory. You don't have to answer. Just listen to the question. Who's watching your son? Yeah. You see, we examined her remains. She had a scar on her lower abdomen, a surgical scar. It had been stitched up and had fully healed, meaning it was long before her death. She had a child. Didn't she? No, she had appendicitis. Your child. Where's the kid? How should I know? <laughs> Father of the fucking year. <laughs> He's in a field somewhere. Even my child. Frolicking, enjoying life. You didn't know he'd been born? Wait a minute. Everything. How would he be? How did that pregnancy go? <laughs> oh, it's a boy. Strange love said so. And his name. So sh did she we know it was a boy? Hal. We called him Hal, oh, my I son I didn't know I had. <laughs> <laughs> my unknowable Schrodinger's boy. Oh. Uh. All right, Ooh. so he, need, he needs a grief counselor. He also needs some improv classes in order to learn how to respect, like, established <laughs> facts in the scene. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this stuff with Huey that starts happening is one of the th one of the plot threads I am the most interested in this game. Uh, no, like, that owns. He sucks so bad. He sucks so bad. He's so bad at, like... <laughs> Lie. He just literally changes his story on a dime, like, like every minute. <laughs> like, oh god, where's the kid? I don't know. I didn't know I had a son. I have a son. His name's Hal. He's four years old. <laughs> so apparently, canonically, mm -hmm. if you count the game I'm about to mention as canon, yep. these are the survivors of Metal Gear Survive, the, the titular survivors <laughs> who came back through a time hole. God, yeah, we haven't even addressed this. So Metal Gear Survive, at when Ground Zeroes happens and Mother Base is being destroyed, after Big Boss leaves and like the helicopter crashes, in Metal Gear Survive, a giant wormhole opens up that swallows other surviving members who are still on base, and they get teleported. You think... I'm, I'm gonna spoil the, the game, by the way. You think they get teleported to an alternate dimension full of crystalline zombies. Turns out that is not the case. Rather, you've been transported ye hundreds of years into the future where the nanomachines of Metal Gear have evolved and turned into awful, hideous, fucked-up monsters that have destroyed the planet. Um, 
<laughs> and you are tasked with destroying like the the mother nano machine beast, which genuinely looks really cool. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are, there are two endings to that game, the good ending and the bad ending. And the bad ending leads to the soldier you are playing as, yeah, shooting through a wormhole and becoming very confused and and wandering the 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 map of this game. That's how it all ties together. It's absurd. I don't I don't want to read too much into things, but making the thing that ties it into Metal Gear Solid Five the bad ending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, this is for people watching. Uh, there's electroshock torture in this cutscene, but it's not like the usual Metal Gear ty type where people just go. <laughs> it's like it looks more like actual electroshock torture. So <laughs> there you go. So she got some bugs. We finally we finally yeah. confirmed. Yep. Confirmed she got bugs in her. And she's allowing this. Yeah, she, she could just... I mean, she can just slip through handcuffs and stuff, so I don't know. The, the, the leg twitching is really creepy to me, though. I hate it. Um... You ready to talk? By the way, the, the the instrument they're using to charge up this thing right here with the crank, that's mm -hmm. actually a item you develop in Peace Walker. It's the co-op item that lets you further charge up your railgun. <laughs> your lungs have been barbecued. Just now. Take that. You look pretty damn healthy to me. We have Skullface to thank for that, right? I was the only one capable of applying them. To parasite oh, you, you like to watch the electroshock therapy. Mm -hmm. Hello, talker, get out of here. Why are you here? Did Skullface send you? Or did you have your own score to settle with the boss? <laughs> you want to chime in at all, boss? <laughs> <laughs> She's in love with the legend. What makes you so sure? I was the same way once. What if she's a spy? Look, everybody here is horny for the boss at one time or another in their lives. <laughs> like, 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 Ocelot can detect- Copulating. <laughs> I heard enough out of you, man. Like, Ocelot can tell, like, can supposedly detect this love because he's felt it before, but like, Miller should be able to as well, honestly. Like, between Boss, Miller and Ocelot, Miller's the one who's gotten closer to Snake. They were in a cardboard box together. My love was beaten out of me in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still on for Saturday? Let's not get in tea. Oh. Sorry, that just makes my makeup flare up. You know, quiet. Now that we know that you, 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 you speak this language as well, and mm -hmm. we have Code Talker who also understands it. You could just like talk at me, and he'll just translate. <laughs> Come on, it's their special it's secret. Oh, also, we know that translation is a very different office. skill. It's true. <laughs> Boss, some of the kids we've been keeping here have escaped. God oh, damn it! Where? How? How? They swam, the right? They just swam for it. I'll add information to your side ops list as it comes in. Check in the bellies of sharks. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have this that examination report uh, on Quiet, and that lets us make a a new outfit for Quiet, and unlike the pig's blood outfit, it's like mm -hmm. actual, normal clothes, and it's like a good outfit. <laughs> it's something that you could call an outfit, unlike yeah. the pig's blood. <laughs> so the kids escaped. The kids escaped. All of them. If, if someone leaves your place and you use the word escaped, they were a prisoner. Like, there's no yeah. two ways about it. Yeah. 
Like, especially after one of the kids got fucking crushed by pipes. I'm sure they were, like, at that point, like, locked up somewhere. Wow, we haven't seen anybody crushed by pipes since the first No More Heroes Let's Play. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Whoa. Deep lore! Way back! <laughs> from downtown! Oh man, A after ending one of the previous episodes with uh, retconning our MGS3 LP into it, uh, <laughs> I'm liking this trend. Alright everybody, you have to go back and watch that whole LP now to get what we're saying. What is there left for her to remember? We've talked about Peace Day, we talked about Nuke. Yeah, fishing, soccer. <laughs> Has she had much Chico memories? Are we going to get a Chico memory? No, she hasn't really. She briefly brought up Chico in one of the last ones going like, oh, where's Chico? Wow, you all got fucked up. Uh-oh. What? I think she might be remembering some things. Hmm. Snake? She's been acting differently lately. <laughs> you mean the blood? Hmm. Before she'd respond to conversation. Just as long as it didn't conflict with her timeline. But now nothing gets a reaction from her. What happened? No idea. Well, Miller did go and tell her that Skullface is dead. <laughs> if anyone should want to avenge it. Well, um, uh, I'll, you know what? I'll come back another time and yeah, show you that you, picture later. You, you can remember something tomorrow, maybe. I, mm, mm. nah. Uh, I... She, hey, she, how, about, how about that sunscreen, huh? Yeah. Oh, she, she's dead too, uh, BT dubs. Oh, uh, never, never mind. I feel like at any point there's the threat of like getting another cassette tape where it's like, Cecile's dead. <laughs> <laughs> like... Amanda's dead. CIA killed Amanda. Yeah. A lot of birds just killed Cecile. <laughs> hundreds of them. Just dive bombing her. Like the only mention we got a strange love was like just in Ground Zeroes hearing that like oh she had left because she was just mm -hmm. done with working with them, and like in episode twelve of this Let's Play or something like that we listened to a cassette tape where it's just like oh yeah she like was salvaging stuff from from uh, Peace Walker, but we don't know why. Mm -hmm. Like that is it. <laughs> We call that foreshadowing in the business. Oh, 40 hours earlier foreshadowing. I studied the parasites, but actually I didn't study I, what is a parasite. <laughs> Why are you called code talker? During World War II, the US military used the languages of different tribes, including the Navajo as codes, right? Yes, but I was already in my late 50s. ...sent to the battlefield to speak in those codes. Were you one of them? Our mother tongue was indeed used for war. But I did not go. I was already over the conspiracy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. So yeah, like, people bring up a lot. Uh, a lot of people are annoyed with how many Code Talker tapes there are. Mm -hmm. There are some that we have not listened to yet that will probably just be separate videos where we don't talk over them, where it's it's just him saying copulation over and over and talking about how the parasites work in great detail. But I feel like Code Talker, out of all the new characters, is the only one that, like, gets any type of backstory. So I appreciate having this stuff, at least. Yeah. I'm sorry. I guess we shouldn't be calling No, it's code fine code for code. you. We're, no, we are friends. I don't mind. <laughs> the reason Skullface called me Code Talker was because I also am responsible for coding language into the vocal cord parasite. Sure, let's go with that. I am the same as those young warriors used for a cipher's sake. Yeah, cipher, mm -hmm. get it? Mm -hmm. never forget that. Wrapping everything the with a nice little bow. I was seduced by the parasites. Whoa. That is a fact. How? You mean Copulating. From of scientists? That I cannot deny. But there is more to it. The story goes back to the 19th century. To my earliest memory. One day... Victoria had government. just been crowned. <laughs> if we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Yeah. That was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. Forced assimilation mm -hmm. is a form of like genocide. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop. Their education was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. 
not tantamount. You can take out the word tantamount. It was <laughs> ethnic cleansing. <laughs> it is. And, and it continues to be so. Mm -hmm. It was then that I came across literature at the foundation claiming that man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite, one that distinguishes between languages as a precursor to reproduction. Who the fuck and wrote that? <laughs> hey folks, Vapor Snake here. Uh, I lost all of my children. Oh no! All of my kids disappeared. Debra! Debra, let me see the kids! <laughs> And if I'm gonna go find these kids, I better look like a responsible adult. I can change! Look at me, Debra! <laughs> I bought a tux, I got fitted for a suit! We were so happy then, remember? I, I, I'm wearing my, my finest cyborg arm! Let's have another, it'll be like old days. <laughs> I'm and not you even- don't fucking take this one from me this time, Debra! <laughs> I'm bringing the dog. He's mine! You never liked him anyway! Yeah! I'm the one who taught him how to strap balloons! <laughs> Who's drug? You're drug, fuck! <laughs> we gave Ralph, that kid who died in the accident, a burial at sea. The man in charge of that facility... What about strange love? Just... <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Just curious. <laughs> yeah. Strange. Mm. It's obvious they've lost their trust in adults. <laughs> now? <laughs> it was only... That that pipe that fell was the pipe that broke the camel's back. I bought this suit with money I wanted the dog races. I put Dee Dee in there. He's really good. I think he's got he's a career. So fast. Yeah. I mean, he did win by stabbing all the other dogs with an electroshock <laughs> knife. <laughs> but there's no rule against it. Also, Dee Dee got a head start because he wasn't chasing the little, like, rabbit that moves along, along the track. He was actually chasing my rocket fist. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be at least one vape bar in the world called the Smoke Box, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, is that just a over-literal translation of Hot Box? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That's what I would have said if Jeremy Blaustein was still on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Just, just talking about vape, vape bars and stuff reminds me that there was one very close to where I work uh, mm -hmm. when I first moved here several years ago. And within that a makes week, perfect sense. Within a week, uh, it burst into flames at around three in the morning, and it was very suspicious. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Now, what what is the camo index like in the tuxedo? Uh, very bad, I believe. <laughs> Are there any tactical advantages to the tuxedo? No. So, uh, like, like I think the only way it works... <laughs> you okay. stuck by that guy pretty good, though. <laughs> I mean, he's a decoy. Oh, but. okay. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think it's okay when it's really dark. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine for that, but everything else, yeah, you just stick out like a sore thumb. Oh, whoops. I accidentally <laughs> dropped the main on Dee Dee! And now Dee Dee's knocked out! Oh no! That's never happened, has it? No. I don't think we've ever seen that. Yeah, it's possible to ac- I mean, I've, sh I've- Several times I have already knocked the horse out through various means. Well, the horse but... is hale and hearty. <laughs> yeah. Dee Dee's okay. Also, unfortunately, Dee Dee cannot ride in trucks. <gasps> oh, well, that would just be too powerful. Yeah. Well, Hold on, it's kids. It's a balancing thing. Hold on, kids. I'm figuring out. I, I haven't driven in a while. I don't have my license back yet. And besides, I know this subject. I won't go overboard <gasps> with a kid. Forget it. You're I'll just torture it. him a little. Snake. <laughs> just a bit. Be sure to bring them all oh, back. I would love that, like side scene in the first Metal Gear Solid. Like, hey, you want to know my first memory of you, Ocelot? It was when you tortured me. <laughs> yeah. I had just helped a lot of my old friends escape your strange prison strut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Chap we're good friends. Ch chapter two of this game is so crazy to me just because there's so it's more focusing on just what's going on in Mother Base. And there's so many things. Huey is being a weird scumbag who's constantly lying. 
Mm -hmm. Something's going like, on with Paz. Quiet talks a little bit, like... It's just we, it's I crazy. feel like we spend so much of our time in Chapter 1 imagining the, the abject lunacy back on Mother Base. Yeah. And now that just is the game now. <laughs> yeah. We receive nature's blessings, and we affirm our part in it. And in doing so... It's we this circle of life. <laughs> Sorry, hamburgers. Uh, hamburgers? Even we didn't have become Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't let them go. Well, as far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. The victory of capitalism. Hmm. Copulate you, Miller. <laughs> and you ask for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can know. But I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. <laughs> Code Talker <laughs> owns <laughs> so hard. <laughs> right? I love it. <laughs> He's great. I kind of like Code Talker a lot in this game. All right, then. One good old fashioned all American icon coming up. <laughs> all right, so obviously. When Kotaka was forced into a residential school mm -hmm. and uh, assimilated, he was also given the name Jones. Jughead is his great grandson. <laughs> no, it was George. George to be true. Got yeah. So uh, the hamburgers of Kazuhira Miller uh, line of cassette tapes are really fucking good. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is just this incredible storyline of Code Talker eating hamburgers. <laughs> uh, no one else. No one else gets burgers. It's it's entirely a ta a taste testing <laughs> hamburgers with Code Talker and Miller. It's really fucking great. Uh, in in my imagination, it was everyone on the base trying to convince Miller that hamburgers are the food of the future. <laughs> it's just funny listening to those again, what with uh, some tweets coming up again of, you know, people with awful galaxy brain takes on how, you know, oh, Saving Private Ryan has nothing to do with politics. Metal Gear has nothing to do with politics. And even the joke tapes about hamburgers is talking about, like, forced assimilation of Native yes, Americans yes. and shit. And the symbol of American capitalism. Like, Imperialism through capitalism. Even the fucking joke tapes yes, have that yes. in it. Like, fuck. <laughs> also, while I was just talking about that, uh, there is a very faint thumping noise in the background. That was a truck driving to the mansion that kept running into my horse. I think the horse is okay, but he may have passed that. I'm not sure. That horse is gonna hate you. Yeah. I am glad that this mansion gets reused for like one, like, uh, the story mission we did two episodes ago is in mm. this area and one of the kids is here. I'm glad that they reuse this area a couple times just because like it is such a big and complex area that it it's one of the spots that does not get, <laughs> does not get tiring to play a couple times over. I love the story of this stick up because he <laughs> knows all you have is a water pistol. Yeah. But he just dropped his gun so he knows he's beat. <laughs> yeah. It's just, just all right, you got me. It's, you... Fine. I give up. I'll work for you. I'm wet and you're armed. <laughs> We're, I'm done. I'll here? Here is where I should lay down? Okay, uh, that's, yeah, fine. Look, I know that's a squirt gun, but you got a big rocket launcher on your back, and I don't know what that shoots yet. It could shoot water balloons for all I know, but... I'm hoping it's just a big net. Yeah. I, but there's squirt no gun. way to know. Blinded. Take that. <laughs> hey, uh... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> A, uh, another recent mod uh, got made for this game that actually brings back the banana from Peace Walker. <gasps> the banana! Uh, so, yeah, at some point we're probably going to have to bring in some mods into the LP because there's too many good ones. Like, the modding scene isn't super active, but a lot of the stuff that still gets put out or, or maintained is generally pretty high quality stuff. Not They're not going to care, out. apparently, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. 
They're all thinking to themselves, okay, if anybody asks, it was a landmine. Yeah. It was a, just a, the exploding kind of landmine. <laughs> <laughs> this. So I didn't practice this part. I was just kind of winging it, but I'm very happy with the, say. the uh the just kind of clown show that's happening here. It's just a bunch of dudes stuck in the the fucking house of tricks. Yeah, your hall of mirrors. <laughs> really, the the vapor snake hall of fame is what it is. Yeah. In E3 gameplay demos for this thing, one of the there is more than one decoy. There's also uh -huh. a decoy that was Lisa from PT, the spooky lady. Yes, um, yes. And they had to take her out because the game got canceled and PT got removed and all that. So, uh, thankfully, people were able to extract Lisa's model from PT and mod it back in as a decoy. That's fun. People, people preserving the cut game features. I love it. Hey, hey. Get down. <laughs> Hands up. Squirt gun. Get down. <laughs> Man. Sometimes kid is weapon. Yeah. I mean, look, I was never friends with a kid in the first place. It's not like my friendship level can go down with them anymore. <laughs> I'd replace you with six horses. <laughs> I'd replace you with one sixth of a horse. <laughs> I looked it up, and it looks like it's true. About six kids equals one horse. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on, you know, your skill at haggling, but I, yeah. yeah. Debra, I got the kids back! <laughs> Two of them! <laughs> I'm giving them a bath! <laughs> I stopped paying the water bill. The squirt gun's good enough. It's all full of fluoride anyway. That's how Cypher gets you, you know. <laughs> so congratulations on rebuilding your family. Yeah. Co-talker wants a burger, but the hormones in those make it turn, I don't know. It makes you turn however Co-talker is, I don't know. <laughs> Old and ancient, full of bugs. Oh no, don't Mess. hit the rotors, don't hit the rotors! Oh god, oh Don't god. hit the... <laughs> well, we're having donkey burgers, Co-talker. <laughs> <laughs> Freshly ground! <laughs> it's time to listen to some tapes that sound kind of like they may have been planned to be cutscenes at some point. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Here's secret recordings of Skullface and Code Talker. Get some, get some Skullface action too. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my, just hearing that sound effect. Mm-hmm. And they don't edit out him walking. <laughs> oh my god! Yep. 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 You disappoint me. Some business is happening, face. some blocking. Yeah, it totally sounds like there should yeah. be visuals for this. <laughs> you won't respond to anyone else, so I figured it must be me you wanted to see. Wait, is this in stereo too? Yeah, there's Fuck. positional audio too. <laughs> Having this with visuals would probably blunt how expository it is. Yes. Yeah. So like, if it's framed as a tape, like, hey Snake, here's the situation. I was held under I threat of death, but I didn't want to do it. Is so different from, thing, you have to work for me or I'll kill you, but I know you away. don't like that situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am explaining this to you. Yeah. All that's left is to see if I can actually disable a nuke with the help of your metallic archaea. Once that's done, I won't have to return here again. And your suffering will end. As will your peoples. That We're could almost be taken cool in topic. several ways. <laughs> in our own way. My I don't trust you enough for it to be one of the good ones. <laughs> You're just another moat in the store. How you react to all the slings and arrows, that's what counts. He's still upset about being Polonius. He's, yeah, he's still very upset. What I have done is forbidden. Forgive me. 
all of you. The world should be left the way it is. You will That's why I'm changing it. <laughs> Whew, ten minute tape. Yeah. It's a big is someone one. going to be tortured? It won't work on my people. True. The vocal cord parasite doesn't respond to your language. But it could, right? Like, you could train it to. English. So, it, it comes up in some other cassette tapes later, but yeah, for some reason, it Navajo is the one language the parasites them. cannot attune to. <laughs> There's no if reason for that. I don't know. Language. There's a the lot English of like biology lessons. So I'm sure there. Yeah, I can't remember all of them, so but there's some type of simple. fucking explanation. Every time I ring but it's bell, absurd either way. You found that one too. Yes, the Hungarian strain that responds to the CK's dialect. Silence. I like imagining uh, Skullface's problem you. with having too many Shall bugs be. in him. Mm -hmm. uh, the way is that he can no longer talk like a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Also, like again, this must have been a cutscene. What is all this like is this your fighting sound man? effects? Yeah. Arm wrestling. Let my people go and never bother them again. Like the the, the weird noises they use makes it sound like like Code Talker's using his parasites somehow to fight back. He's he's powering up. Yeah. <laughs> But like, there's no visual, so it's like it's weird. No, what are you uh, doing? But like, I'm imagining this is a level further beyond hamburgers. <laughs> I am not afraid. I probably have every language strain inside of me. Like, I'm imagining Skullface being diagnosed with too many parasites lost. in him, the way Mr. Burns did in that one episode of having too many diseases. But that suits just cramming fine. the little things through a tiny door, if none of them can fit. My body has been burned on countless occasions. But it survives, thanks to your children. I'm terrible at kitchen safety. <laughs> that is why I trust you. I used to be a fry cook. <laughs> then What's I was a that? fried cook. <laughs> Catch. <laughs> no! It's a really tall staircase. Yeah. The, the soldier by the door is trying to count, and like, <laughs> wait, how, how, how many is that? Maybe, maybe well, it's a then. spiral staircase. That would explain yeah. it. There never was any soldier. So long. You. How dare you! Yeah, there you go. Uh, there are several more cassette tapes that uh, sound exactly like this, where it's it's so clear they were supposed to be cutscenes. Yeah. The, the, uh, I would have liked this one to be a cutscene. I don't know. The KGB have already dispatched a Spetsnaz squad to retrieve that film canister and cover the whole thing up. Finally, no time to wait. finally, part and four of the tenth planet. Then we can shake off the last remnants of Skullface and the phantoms he left behind. Ugh, I just got a little bit of Skullface stuck to my boot. Uh, Gross. Oh. Don't don't track that in here. Leave those outside. He's dead, but he keeps making speeches. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is the uh, sneaking suit you get near the end of Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh. It was, it was like the battle sneaking suit. Yeah, yeah, I remember the orange highlights. Yeah. They're, they're very distinctive as far as sneaking suits go. Yeah. This is uh, this is not in the game normally. It is also part of the DL costume DLC. Oh, all right. Uh, while we've got a minute, I would like to apologize to the world. Apparently, I was way off base with everything I've ever said about Jeff Keighley. <laughs> this is our first recording after it was revealed he will indeed be in Ground Zeroes. Yeah. He's in the magic white hallway. Yeah. I'm, I'm eating crow yeah, and taking geez. pictures of it because this all started with overanalyzing Kojima's Twitter uh, habits. I mean, now, okay, so Jeff Keighley being like one of the people that you can meet and connect with in Death Stranding. I'm now I'm wondering if Jeff Keighley got Kanye West in the game. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was gonna AI. say, I'm <laughs> holding out to the fact that the Kanye thing is a fucking weird thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Remedy's new game Control came out, uh, mm -hmm. and there is some type of like experience pod relaxation pod thing you go to in some point of control uh, mm -hmm. that's voiced by a Japanese scientist and it's actually Kojima doing the voice acting <laughs> uh, because I there are pictures of him visiting remedies so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sam Lake is in is one of the dudes in Death Stranding so you're saying there is a chance, there is a certain chance that Jeff Keighley is in the game and Kojima thought he was some fan who won a contest. <laughs> maybe an unusually old Make-A-Wish kid. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I've met people who watch our videos like that, and I love them dearly. <laughs> I also like when they get the hint and we go our separate ways and live our lives as separate individuals. <laughs> yeah. And I'm happy to see them every single time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if the person who, uh, I, I, like, two or three years ago randomly realized I was Chip Cheesem at the Black Dog Barbecue Restaurant, but if you're watching this, <laughs> hello! Hi! Yeah! And I understand I remember you. it's not a good situation for you either. There's, like, no good outline. I get it. I've been on that side, too. I yeah. know. <laughs> We're all in this together, it's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and that's really the message of Death Stranding, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> build bridges, baby. <laughs> Gotta build those bridges. Just thinking about Death Stranding more, I just love how... Now that we know that, like, there's essentially a collectible of sorts in the game where you're just connecting random people in Doomsday Bunkers together, and that almost <laughs> all of them are seemingly just people Kojima knows. Mm -hmm. I love how... Every game seemingly now is just escalating in how much it's just Kojima showing off his friends that he knows to everybody. I wish all of my friends were friends. I'm going to try <laughs> to sell millions of people on the idea that they should make my friends friends. I just love that the sonar and horse poop buttons are right next to each other. That's an interesting UI design. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we rename our horse David Coke? Because he was also trained to shit on command by his Nazi nanny. Good job. You got someone's vacation candids. <laughs> oh man, All imagine right. how long it would take for Skullface to show off his slides with how slowly he talks. And here we see the storied snows of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> God damn it. And he probably takes a really long pause before he clicks the next slide, too. I was never given a choice which direction the slideshow should go. <laughs> the one hour photo decided for me. <laughs> one hour photo, big boss. Oh, this tuxedo's really dirty. That's a look! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm showing up to the wedding like this! <laughs> Hell yes! Hey, everybody! <laughs> Sorry, John, I had a rough morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, because we captured Volgan, we got the Fury Corn outfit for the Ooh! horse. Ooh, look, no! Look at him! Oh, your horse is broken! <laughs> Someone has done bad things! Bad, bad thing. It looks like a helicopter crashed into my horse. B because, like, the mission locations are requiring it, this is making me think a lot about old updates and how much I appreciate actually watching them when you put them up, especially when, you know, sometimes there are videos of cassette tapes that we don't do commentary over, which oh, means yeah. I haven't seen them. Yeah. And how nice a touch it is that when, uh... Ocelot was threatening Huey with metallic archaea going directly into his femur. Mm -hmm. They had a cassette tape for how he got some archaea. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this kid got his freedom, got it, got escaped by Eli. Mm -hmm. and then got captured by a bunch of soldiers who then, after <laughs> zip tying him, ceased to have free will. <laughs> yep. That's bad timing, kid. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it sucks. Although, really, with how slow they are, he probably could have gotten up. 
and ran <laughs> for it. I don't know. Well, he was very sleepy. We, we know this. Yeah. Whoa! There's a guy who's freaking out of it. There we go. That's the ticket. <laughs> yep. Oh, another child. <sighs> Might as well wrangle them all up right now. All across this great land of ours. <laughs> so guess what? Code Talker has even more tapes. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Uh, really? So these, there's a lot for the, the, this is the biggest chunk of Code Talker tapes. I have no doubt. These are all, all about the history of the parasites. I will no longer uh -huh. The parasites that you mostly behind. took, there's like what, one vial left. Yeah, the English strain, at least. One vial of English strain left unaccounted for. Yeah. But yeah, when we first rescued Code Talker, he did kind of mumble a bit about how the, the vocal cord parasites enabled man to speak. <laughs> so we're gonna get into that. Oh god. Yeah. I'm glad that he clarified that the ethnic cleansing parasites would do ethnic cleansing. I was... Oh, I was real stuck on that point. As the name suggests. <laughs> They're bad. <laughs> Turns out they're also parasites. <laughs> I wish these tapes were recorded, like, in between the, the Kazuhira Miller burger tapes, so you could hear him, like, chomping on a burger. Just, uh, sizzle noises in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking breaks just to drink some soda or something. Suppose all five billion people on this planet come to read, speak, and think in English. Well, uh, Universal, uh, Disney, 20th Century Fox, oh, but I repeat myself, all of these companies would be very happy about it. Mm. I wonder how much, like, voice direction was given, uh, for mm -hmm. all the Code Talker stuff that's like, no, slower. <laughs> no, no you're, you're even older than that. Think older. Yeah. English. They just have like a, they just pull up an image of the end. It's like, see this guy? Older. Ancient man had no language. Oh, is this where we get to the good stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, I, w I was saying when we first grabbed Code Talker, I'm surprised that uh, Metal Gear hasn't done anything like this to my knowledge. Yeah. Like, the, the earliest in the world any other Metal Gear has touched is what, like, the philosophers of the 1800s? Yeah, like late, yeah. Late 1800s pretty much is as far back as Metal Gear goes, really. But all of the mysticism and philosophy really seems to lend itself to the, the sort of story that would touch on the dawn of mankind. <laughs> it really should, yes! Finally, finally it's happening. Mm -hmm. Why learn your own mating cry when you can latch onto something's vocal cords and make them do it? Yeah. Like, all this stuff is... <laughs> this is, like... And the weird thing is... Okay, it's not, like, true. There's no, like, <laughs> fossil evidence or record of this being true. Yeah. But it's not so weird compared to other things that parasites can make you do. Yeah. I'm horny, so I'm gonna figure out a way to make you make a noise to make your other species, you know, compatriot also horny, <laughs> so you will make out with them. So I... <laughs> <laughs> Copulation. That's how it goes. Yeah. Which controls instincts, making the host feel amorous. No, oh, don't say that. Kind of Horny. Laying pipe. Thirsty. Succeeded in Digging down. Evolutionary traits. But that was not all. But that's the not all. Activated a transcription factor that would what now? control man's <laughs> language ability. A protein that due to its appearance is called 4 kid box protein P2. 
or fox people. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Everything's about goddamn foxes. <laughs> like, I haven't looked, like, creating sophisticated frequencies. I feel like there's this always a chance when this shit's getting written. Like, if Kojima can find anything that just has fox in it, he's like, Yes! 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 I can write this in! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Once human sexual activity ceased to be only seasonal and having lost pigment based sexual Ma? characteristics, hmm? Pig pigment based sexual characteristics? Hmm? Is he talking about baboon ass? <laughs> Maybe? Is he talking about freckles? <laughs> Some people are into that. I don't know. Yeah. It was not long before advanced communication was possible. I think he's talking about baboon ass. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know what else it could be. Luckily for man, it was around this time that a particular retrovirus was circulating. There's no fossil records of viruses! <laughs> you don't fucking know that! I couldn't drive, so I had my friends put me in a box. They drive me here! God damn it, Dad. <laughs> You've been vaping again. You're wearing the tuxedo, we all know. Well, what about it? The tuxedo's nice, it's got class to it. It smells so bad. It's covered the blood of my enemies, it's to intimidate people at the parent-teachers conference. So they know I'm the best dad of them all. <laughs> Alright, what, what is your timestamp? I accidentally clicked on the progress bar and got all lost. Oh, uh, one... I'll pause. I'm at 157. Eight. Nine. I think I'm close. Uh, almost. Hold on. Tell me, keep saying where you're at. Oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> We're synced up again. Okay. Wow. Let's play in action. <laughs> we have to leave some of that in, or else that's a lot of dead air. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I'm just gonna leave it in. Uh, that happens every once in a while, everybody. <laughs> Not very often, but... Um, I mean, it, we, it's just been a, a sneak em, fulton em up adventure, I don't think. I mean, you know, we're in episode fucking 60 of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know the, the Fulton mechanics. Yeah. Vapor Sake's play style that I have planned for him has changed over time throughout this thing just because it's like, oh, wait, uh, the squirt gun's really good. And then I remembered, oh, wait, being on the ground and decking people in the ankles so they fall over is also extremely fun. <laughs> that was the thing I didn't do at all either when I played this for myself. But yeah, it's still really crazy to me just how much... how much stuff they were able to cram into all the systems. Uh... And yet, I still f somehow bitch about not being able to airdrop in a bear. Like... <laughs> like, when is it enough for me? I just don't know. <laughs> it doesn't help that I somehow created the entire thing and thought I read it somewhere else. <laughs> uh. It's the risk you run. Co-talker, kids grow back when you cut them in half, right? <laughs> Starfish parasites. <laughs> How many parasites you got, Co Talker? You're crazy. I think it, it belies the the like plausibility of this game that there's no one in Cipher once they have the metallic Archaea that realizes that this is the real super weapon to end all weapons. Yeah. Because it yes. sure it can turn off nukes. That's fine and dandy. It can also turn off uh, regular missiles and bombs and tanks and planes and just like guns and shit. Yeah, <laughs> like just imagine like, okay, when they were, we were in the helicopter with Code Talker and, you know, we got ambushed by the giant cloud of Metallic Archaea. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. a big fucking cloud. Like, yes. how, mu how many clouds of that can you deploy? Like, if there's ever, like, big convoys of like, is Is any... that the thing? They're just out now? <laughs> yeah, is it incredibly hard to produce in large quantities, maybe? Well, hey, that guy did not notice me. Because <laughs> that, that seems to be the only possible downside is, yeah. is like, logistics. Yeah. But, like... 
Yeah, just being able to deploy deploy massive clavs that can just essentially just disable fucking whatever. Yeah. Any weapon. None of your shit works now. None of your weapons. Yeah. Also, certain people's legs. It no. <laughs> yeah. Boss, we found weapons in the children's section of oh. the living quarters. As you know, weapons are strictly huh. limits. We've got some rule breakers. The weapons we found were handmade. Blades ground out of knives and forks, a couple of bow guns built out of scrap, and explosives made using... How are they supposed to learn to clean up after right themselves if they're making all the detergents in the bombs? You can't just blow up all your clothes. I, I do love how they continue to play up how very dangerous Eli is, because yes, this is dangerous, but also, what a chump. Like, his whole stash just got found and it came to nothing. Yeah. I like Ocelot talking about- for the time being? You're gonna give them back? If you're very, very good, we'll give you back your nail bomb. <laughs> That's exactly what I heard from the people. This explains a lot. Yeah. People who abandoned me more like. That's the spark that kept me going, you know? I wanted to show those adults what I was made of. Wanted to get back one day. Living out of spite forever. Never saw it coming. I guess the the friendly goofy Miller from Peace Walker is more of the the if not the norm for him. He was yeah. angry and spiteful as a kid, better. then he mailed out for a little bit, and now yeah, he's angry right. and spiteful again. Man, how sad is it knowing that Eli's gonna grow up to kill Miller right? and take his face? Oh, <laughs> he's man. the one in your corner, man. Come on. Oh. Nature's blessings. Unadulterated. In hamburger form. Is that it? Nature's Blessings, is that a, is that a brand name? <laughs> is that available at your local grocery store? I thank you for this bounty, Mother Earth. So, what's the verdict? Hmm, not bad. Uh, and, but it does not hold a candle to what I ate back home. So tired of these fucking in and out fundamentalists. It's just a restaurant. God damn. We've discovered a radiation leak in the laboratory on the quarantine uh -oh. platform. It's coming from testing equipment we installed the other day. Members of the medical team have been conducting. Gotta do a U571 in the middle of all this. <laughs> research block to the containment block next to it. Emmerich. There's no need to worry. No radioactive material is leaked. Okay, now I know that all of the radioactive material is leaked. <laughs> oh, well, it's a long, long ride back to Mother Base. Good thing I've got more cassette tapes from Code Talker. Yay, more tapes. Yay! I can't wait to hear about how the parasites get horny now. Oh, no. <laughs> the rise of the vocal cord parasites goes back approximately... Fuck you! <laughs> no, it doesn't! Period. Oh yes, it does. Time, an inhabiting the throat kept them securely in contact. The throats of the what? <laughs> the survivors were those that parasitized. The oh, reptile. okay. Thank you for <laughs> answering the question. Throats. Yeah, reptile throats. Entering the Triassic period, the reptiles. I just love that he has such an incredibly detailed timeline for this. It's you know, so those, great. All those Dinosaur reptile vocal cord fossils we have. <laughs> It's just a wealth of soft tissue fossils from fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> the end of the Triassic period saw another drastic change in the Earth's environment. I got a field museum membership. You can't touch me. Fuck you. It made a certain amount of sense when it was proto-humans, because yeah. human mating does often involve mouth-to-mouth -mouth touching. Yes. Dinosaurs don't smooch. <laughs> they they didn't do it. There's that's not part of like the the image of dinosaurs. Is he trying to tell me that dinosaurs kissed? <laughs> I need I need to see dinosaurs making out. We have found. I want to see deep tongue kissing between stegos. I have found evidence of T Rexes kissing deeply. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're asking me to believe. <laughs> the meteorite impact, the end of the Cretaceous 
period. Velociraptor sucking the face. <laughs> the Brachiosaurus invented the kiss. That is why it is called necking. <laughs> you, you know, there are other writers on this game as well. Like, whose job was it to c construct a 300 million year timeline for the parasites? Right? Where do you begin with that? It would be one thing, like, I have, I have such and such evidence of this being in human development. And for all I know, it happened in birds too. And if it happened to birds, you know, bird ancestors, the, the dinosaurs, like... But no, this is presented as absolute fact. <laughs> 300 yeah. million years it's worth. Not, it's not a theory. An ancient human cadaver, host to the parasites of the uh, Excuse me, his name is The End. He was a friend of mine. <laughs> such a cadaver from a permafrost region. An Fucking Encino Man is where this came from. Hell yeah, it is. Cypher used this to effect a reverse evolution of the modern parasite. The what now? A uh, uh, who? <laughs> That's not a thing. The modern parasite. Reverse evolution? That's not a thing! Male and female inhabit the same host. So they can party in there. <laughs> you know, copulate. <laughs> the amount copulation is said. In this game, it, it's it's it feels like one of those weird localization things where it's like, oh, we really can't say this word. We have to come up with a different word for this. Like, we can't just say sex boink or boink. <laughs> Imagine if he said boink. <laughs> the vocal cord parasites boinked in the host's lungs. Create a strain that would parasitize that region and suppress its literacy functions. The brain area responsible for identity. So after China leapt in literacy just a gigantic degree following the communist revolution, they decided, no, that's too much. Too many of us can read. <laughs> too much reading. Too much reading. Get the anti-reading bugs. Spray them everywhere. East and West. There is no limit to the delusions of those in power. But this delusion threatens to become the, a real The whole thing about the I the Great Leap Forward, that was just cover for the anti-reading bugs. Oh, That's what really did it. Man. If we want to know that the anti-reading bugs work, we need people who can read. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> no one wants to be my friend. Oh. Here, hold on, buddy. I'm coming. Oh. I don't understand their pop culture references. Oh, it's, it's okay. What? Hey, what are these, though? Snake, you should shower. Oh, wow, they're going to you. Are you absorbing my stank? Ugh. Those parasites can do a lot. Uh, apparently. Hey, I hope you aren't, like, bleeding everywhere this time. That was pretty bad last time. Oh, yep. Okay, you're good. This one is a picture of a calendar. Maybe oh, that'll jog her memory. Hey, come on. Look at the year. Look. God, you're so shiny. <laughs> one of the group birthday parties. They are something to look forward to every month. Do they play a game where you have to guess whose birthday so it is because everyone's wearing the mask? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, 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 the winner gets the month? dunk tank full of beer. Jesus. <laughs> Last month was... Oh my god, remember. it is a calendar! <laughs> wow! Whoa! It was... Um... Those candles I... are a fire hazard! <laughs> the, yeah. So the last story mission we did, remember we were getting that, um... We were getting that, uh, container? That film canister left by the intel yes. agent? But also, here's her new costume. It's, oh, it's, a costume! It, it, an actual, like, costume, and not just Greg pig's blood. Soft. Yeah. That floating kid we've run into a few times now. Looks like he was a test subject. You fucking think? Hmm. The Soviets called him the third boy. The third boy was brought to Boys the one and two Alfred are smoke screen. <laughs> it's like After SEAL Team 6. <laughs> I can't believe that we're at the point, though, that even the... Generally, the one thing that's been accepted is just being, like... Just paranormal 
paranormal psychic and ghost people, even they are getting a little more explained. Well, I mean, but they're being explained as psychic and ghost people. I, yeah, I guess like, so. This is no more explanation than exists in the real world for people who want to, like, justify psychic phenomena. Okay, sure. Yeah, it's, uh... Talking about how, uh... Psycho Mantis, like, amplifies people's powers and he gets, like, mm -hmm. magnetized towards, uh, certain people. Uh, I'll actually show it in a later video, but... In every cutscene, he appears where Psycho Mantis is doing shit. You can actually tell which person he is currently, like, possessed by, like, by their emotions. <laughs> it's actually really hard to tell, but there's, like, a little visual signifier on his... on him. Oh, that's uh, nifty. Indicating which person it is. The, the most obvious one was like in the very beginning of the game, or any time he was uh, giving Volgan his powers, his sleeves were always on fire. Ah, yeah. yeah. In like maybe the last video of this LP, I'm, we might take a look at some uh, fan-made side ops. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, when I was I was digging through mods for a later video. Uh, and yeah, people have been able to actually make their own side ops with little Quiet. objectives. Uh, and I, they're actually kind of... <laughs> oh yeah. You can just wave hello. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, some of the uh, fan-made side ops are actually kind of a little better than the ones in the game, just because like... Um... I don't know, they have more flavor text to them for, like, Locked why you're doing the mission, mm -hmm. and they actually have, like, optional fire. objectives within them, too, that are, like, secret. I don't know, they're kind of cool. When he appeared at the Devil's House in Central Africa, Skullface's will controlled the man on fire via the third boy's powers. This just Everything seems complex. <laughs> but even the informant couldn't pinpoint who the host was in the cave within Serac power plant. I know. How many children do you remember being there? Hey, Scully, have you heard about, uh, MSF? They were a private military in the 70s, reformed under the name Time and Dogs in 1984. God, Mulder totally would pull out a file that's just like, this guy was covered in bees and he shot bees at people with guns made of bees. Ever hear the bee ghost? ...strongest animosity of all individuals within the boys' reception range, estimated to be a three-mile radius, Beating out even Volgan and Skullface. Your son hates you, boss. I love that we're, so I love that we're able to measure how angry a person is now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like one of those applause meters at a sports game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who here's the most pissed off? But he's still a kid. Like, maybe them oh being man. kids was enough to bring them together. And if so, maybe with Eli, he isn't feeding off him, but acting in symbiosis with him. Watch out if those two grow up and become allies in some sort of terrorist cell. <laughs> I won't help them, that's for sure. <laughs> I would never. Uh, but yeah, I just love in, like, the world of Metal Gear Solid Five, like, how badly you're- how mad you are and how badly you want revenge is, like, your power level, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so right. pissed off, can, can people can feel get, it three miles away. Can we get R&D to invent the Anger Scouter? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, it would totally just be an upgrade to the to your binoculars. Mm -hmm. We scan dudes. Oh man. If Konami is listening, I would like to pitch a series of, of DLC missions called Foxhound Babies. <laughs> and just see what, what Sniper Wolf up to in yeah. these Halcyon days of yore. Probably nothing good, because probably, probably the world that fucking good. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> especially... Especially in the days where Big Boss is still doing stuff. Like, everything <laughs> just seems miserable. Maybe finally get Decoy Octopus on screen for the first time. Right? That was a thing I truly thought, like... I really thought, oh, at some point in 5, before release, they, they gotta do something with Decoy Octopus, right? He's never actually had, like, true screen time. Mm hmm um, What if Code Talker is Decoy Octopus? Oh, God. That's why none of this bullshit makes any sense. He's making it up. Oh, He's man. making it up as he goes. I mean, it's, it's just funny because, you know, 
the first Metal Gear Solid was such a landmark in like, here's an action game, but everyone's always talking all the time, and they have these <laughs> defined characters and like yeah. they have pasts and. Maybe we will get into it more in, in other things, and maybe we won't. But then there's just this one guy. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. You find out about him when you find out he's already dead. <laughs> God damn. Your rage was like a big bang in his head, blowing the lid off his powers. It's not what the big bang did. There were no lids. Everything was powered by anger, malice, revenge. This is how the end of the report sums things up. Both the Just a selfie of the informant shaking his head. <laughs> test subjects of paranormal research for I died for this? <laughs> like Just a series of people puppets? <laughs> I guess the anger emanating from you was something he could truly relate to. <laughs> the boy had also been killed. <laughs> And and betrayed and and all people close to him uh, left for dead. Mm -hmm. Middle school man, it's rough. And also since we're, we're we were close to it, uh, we're gonna get another mother base soldier. Oh good. Um, but yeah, I know like the Ocelot says like oh big big boss's anger and, and desire for revenge is what what set Psycho Manus off when he was flying near him, but like. Big Boss doesn't seem mad. <laughs> Miller he, is he mad. He didn't seem mad when he woke up. He seemed kind of disoriented and confused. He seemed disoriented and confused, and like now Big Boss just seems like depressed. Yeah. <laughs> like with the, the little amount he talks and the way he talks when he does, like he just sounds depressed and like he wants to just move on from this shit. <laughs> still, still waters run deep, you know? That, yeah, that's, yeah. that's just a cover for a deep boiling rage. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, seems like you're uh, having a pretty easy time breathing through that amount of skin that's exposed. Huh. <laughs> huh. Oh, hey, hey, why'd you do that? She, she's getting choked up. Okay, I get, yep, in sure. A, in a literal sense. Oh, this cutscene. And five, six, seven, eight. This is what happens when you get your your friendship even higher with quiet. <laughs> you summon the rain. <laughs> you, you summon the rain, and she does this. This. <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid. What music do you think they were playing in the mocap studio? <laughs> All right, there, there you go, meat ghost. <laughs> well, fine, we'll get you new boots, Jesus. You could just say. <laughs> CQC, tactical takedown. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is a very popular scene to swap models in the <laughs> PC sure. version. Uh, I bet it doesn't work with DD. I think the joints just don't uh, work. It, you could do it. The game might crash, maybe. Uh, the most recent model swap I saw this just like a week or two ago was uh, swapping Quiet out for Hideo and swapping mm -hmm. Snake out for a fan-made model of Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> <laughs> There's also one for <laughs> Kojima and Norman Reedus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's one where they swap Quiet out for Lisa from PT. <laughs> that one's really good. So yep, there you. Go. That's uh, yep. Boss, what are you, what are you doing in there? <laughs> mm. I gotta take another shower for different reasons. <laughs> Back to pause again. Yeah, that that'll be more comfortable, <laughs> surely. I mean, as long as she, she's not picking at that scar, she'll, uh... God. You get to the strut, and now she's just entirely inside out. Oh, man. It's like a snap bracelet, you know, once, once it just keeps <laughs> oh, going. God. So that, that photo of her on the, the beach with a bunch of soldiers reminds me... I, I Maybe I brought it up at some point in the Peace Walker LP uh, I did, but... Uh, 
Before Peace Walker came out, they released the full Love Deterrence song, and it was mm -hmm. actually a music video where Paz and a bunch of other bass soldiers were on the beats dancing to the song. I'm sure it charted. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I've actually shown that anywhere in, in an LP, so uh, maybe I'll, like, tack it on the end of this video later. <laughs> that's the copyright strike that's going to kill us. Love oh, deterrence. Damn it. You were able to survive take on me, but love deterrence. That's the end. <laughs> Why isn't Quiet really tanned, actually? Yeah, w wait a minute. The parasites mess with your melanin? God, the parasites can do anything. <laughs> they can lie about Ocelot's aim. It's never off on any day, thank you very much. <laughs> time for story time. Hmm, <laughs> actually, time for gameplay. This what? Is, this is no cassette video. What? But the title led me to believe. Whoa. The episode uh, number. Well, I had to squeeze that this whole block of two videos here, I wanted to squeeze in just like a lot of the side stuff out of the way because uh, uh, I desperately okay. want this LP to end in a certain amount of updates. <laughs> 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 but uh, we are actually playing one mission that gets like a, a harder difficulty later because it actually unlocks something for beating it. Okay. This is the one time when we did the quiet boss fight before. We're doing this as Vapor Snake, of course. Yes. Uh, beforehand, uh, you can just like airdrop supply boxes on her damn head. Yes. Uh, in the extreme version, was, they actually it was wonderful. Yeah. In the extreme version of this fight, they actually changed how uh, that works, and in fact, she will just <laughs> she will just dodge out of the way. You can no longer drop boxes on her head. She knows your tricks. Yeah. She she fucking knows. Man, to dance with someone is to truly understand them. <laughs> uh, but there is a strategy that worked very well in the original boss fight that I did not do that also works very well in the extreme version of the fight, which is uh, just dropping a fucking tank into the, the battlefield. There we go. Hey, you hey, got quiet. a big gun? I got a big gun too. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's... There's, quiet basically does not pose a threat anymore when you're in a tank because her gun does almost no damage to it. Uh, I guess the only thing you would really have to worry about is uh, if she's close to the tank and if she dodges away, she'll throw grenades at you, and mm, yeah, that that can do some damage. But I just love that the tank automatically comes with a hundred rounds in its cannon. <laughs> that feels like I'm cheating. It feels like there should be like ten rounds in it or something. They know who they're sending it to. Yeah, this will be a thing I'll cover in greater detail later, but, uh, there is a... There has been a group of people who have held firm to the belief ever since this game came out that, uh, all these years since all the Konami shit happened, mm -hmm. uh, this has actually all been a secret ruse to trick us and in fact, Death Stranding is a new Metal Gear Solid game. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. the truthers. Yeah. Kojima truthers. They are Kojima truthers! Uh, and in fact, Death Stranding is one, Metal Gear Solid Zero, and two, is also Silent Hills <laughs> at the same time! There is like one or two YouTube accounts that basically nonstop make videos about this thing they call the Ruse Cruise. Uh, uh -huh. and they are very similar to, like, Flat Earther, Truther-style conspiracy videos. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, as, as far as single-topic YouTube channels go, there are worse ones. Yeah. I... <laughs> uh, but this one account makes videos that are, on average, about two hours long. Oh my god, there's not even that much of the game. No! Uh... Oh, Quiet is right behind me. I heard her gun click. Hold on, Quiet, I'm coming. There you are. Speaking of conspiracy theories, there were a bunch for Metal Gear Solid V before it came out, too. One of the mm -hmm. really big, widely held... How did those uh, pan out, by the way? Oh, uh, all of them were wrong, except for one. But it was the only one that was also like, yeah, I can totally buy that. There's actual evidence for it. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the really big ones for a long time was this idea that um, we were actually secretly playing as Grey Fox. Where did your fucking tank go? Whoa. Whoa. The conspiracy was that we were actually playing as Grey Fox disguised as Big Boss. I don't know why. But anyways, the reason why you want to do this mission is it gets a Sniper Wolf costume for Quiet. Hey, we were just talking about her! Yeah! Something that I think, uh... All the Metal Gear games up to this have been really good at, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that was pointed out to me on the Abnormal Mapping podcast episode on um, Zone of the Enders 2, actually. Yeah. Is how you're never doing the same thing too much. Like, there, there's always something new coming, some some new style of gameplay happening, right? Like, yeah. every, every boss fight has its own, like, logic or trick, or, you know, you're sniping to cover Emma go across the pontoons, or just something more than the puzzle game of figuring out uh, cameras and guard patterns. Yeah. And, like... By being open world, Metal Gear Solid Five gives you the option to do that yourself. Mm -hmm. An option that you, in in like these three playthroughs, are are definitely taking advantage of. But like, most people are gonna find a thing or two that works for them. Yeah, absolutely. And do that for every mission for which it works. Yeah, that is definitely like a weird, a weird trade off in this game. Because even when I was playing it my first time, I did notice after a while, like, oh, I am I have fallen into a play style that works very yeah. well, which is the silenced Trank sniper rifle and quiet, and we just wipe everything out from a mile away. <laughs> like, there is a blueprint you can get in this mission for a flamethrower. Uh, it's really hard to find, though, because this is another mission, like uh, one of the earlier ones, uh, where the helicopter, the uh, blueprint is kept inside a helicopter, so you gotta blow it up and like run to where the helicopter landed and exploded. And logically, why? Yeah, I don't like it. Who who put that there? Yeah, th like there's no way you would ever know. <laughs> ah. I bet there was a blueprint in that helicopter. It's very important for one team's blueprint to get to another team. <laughs> We're gonna put it on this helicopter, but wait! Something came up. Helicopter, <laughs> we need you to shoot the, the, the ghost man. Yeah. Pretty sure the legendary big boss is still operating in our region. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't move. This fucking sucks for everybody. <laughs> Nobody's doing any good war around here but him. We should yeah. leave. You know, we should probably just stop doing war so this dude stops making money because he steal all Big of our boss business. boss is the true global deterrent. <laughs> <laughs> it happened in an earlier take of this mission I did, but uh, if you ever, like... Like, if you ever get caught, Quiet will shoot the dude that just caught you. Yes. To, 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 to try and stop the alert. She's a good friend. Yeah, but that she will do that even in some situations where you're like, quiet, please don't shoot this guy in the face. For instance, <laughs> if you're in slow-mo, like you just got caught and you're going to grab the dude in CQC before he can call the alert, sometimes while he's getting, while you're grabbing him, she will shoot him in the face at the same time. <laughs> um, and sometimes she is, uh, Due to just weird timing with getting caught and trying to fault the dude, sometimes she'll shoot the dude I am faulting in the head as he's flying up into the air. <laughs> and that sucks. It's a very rare occurrence. So it's never like a, wow, quiet really fucked this up for me, but uh, it's pretty funny at least. Uh, that blueprint is not for a flamethrower for you, it's a flamethrower for your robot. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna say dog. Oh, yeah. Man, I was hoping. Boss. As we suspected, the mastermind behind the kid's escape was Eli. It's hard to believe, but apparently... He How is this hard to believe? <laughs> he keeps Look trying to kick your ass constantly. Boss, we just listened to a, a fucking tape about how he hijacked a psychic kid's brain to pilot a <laughs> mech to kick our ass. <laughs> Where is the surprise? I told them. Last chance to face the world with no regrets. Last chance. You better be ready for your drag back here. Ready to face the world as enemies. <laughs>
No! That's the first word he's ever said to his son. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, buddy. I'm not like you. Well, on a genetic level. Goodbye, father. <laughs> I don't need you anymore. Except later when you will need his corpse. <laughs> I'm gonna need your genetic code at some point, Dad. But like the living you, I will never need the living you. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> How angry do you have to be to supercharge Psycho Mantis to make a mech fly? Damn it. They took our robot that was strangely functional enough to be a big robot again. Thanks, Huey. I guess every kid gets a trophy these days. Yeah. Some of them just happen to be eight stories tall. <laughs> I finished looking into whether or not he's a product of that project. I have an answer. <gasps> I put it on tape. Oh, the answer is definitely yes. <laughs> All right, time to listen to this tape. Am I the father? Both tests say there is zero percent chance that the two of you are blood relatives. Why? Huh? are negative. He's not your son, nor is he your clone. He's just another person. So really, he can have the robot. Who cares now? Yeah, who gives a fuck? Oh, you might still have one somewhere out there. <laughs> but if Eli isn't the boss's clone... Or two! He's so obsessed with him. Not to mention having one hell of an attitude for his age. I don't know. Maybe he's just Learning shitty. Truth, Eli's had an attitude problem from day one. So what is he You that? took him prisoner. Well, he's a little mistrustful. <laughs> open up more first. Well. Uh, liquid ain't liquid. Huh. There seems to be a real oh, weird sense of perspective here on the base. <laughs> yeah. Kid's real pissed off at us. All we did was take him prisoner and just break his arm. I'd say it feels emptier now that the kids are gone, but honestly, it feels the same. <laughs> just gonna look up at that crow's nest, see that Eli's gone, <laughs> and not really care too much. Oh, he took his chair with him, too! about Eli hijacking Silanthropus. We know how he got it moving. It was Emmerich. What? He used the kids in the staff living quarters to carry out his repairs. What? We got the details on tape. <laughs> you don't want to hear this. The, the whole base is full of candid camera. <laughs> Can you imagine a child piloting it? Yes. Oh, sure. Easily. <laughs> it wouldn't work. Well, I bet it's just like riding a bike. I said it didn't work. It... Uh, Who did you try? <laughs> I, I didn't. Did you put your son in it? Uh, we never did that. The his son that I that never met now, and loved dearly. I, I thought you said you never saw his face. But you made him pilot Sahalanthropus. You used him in your experiments. He wanted to get in. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was such a short time. Who are you really? You're not a victim, and you're not the silent majority. You're a perpetrator and a petty hypocrite. The real world doesn't make you suffer. It's Have you considered that maybe Otacon's just a bad pilot? <laughs> God, I love that Huey just fucking put his little baby boy in a Metal Gear. <laughs> oh, hi. I mean, it, it was a weight issue, right? Like... Yeah. Smaller people seems like a quick fix. What? Why? What is this shit? <laughs> is there something on my face? What what's is? happening? <laughs> Does Otacon have memories of being in this Metal Gear? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to know. What? Quiet. What is it? What? 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 You, what? What? She looks like she's been putting, like, quiet heart boss in her notebook over and over again. Yeah. And trying to do, like, the, the, what her last name would be, but she doesn't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a lot of question marks. 
Man, you cannot stay still. Oh god, she's looking at me through the iDroid screen. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. It, this is feeling really clingy all of a sudden. Like this helicopter is really cramped all of a sudden. <laughs> is, it, is it hot in here? Uh, Pequod, all right. Hey, Pequod, what have you been up to? <laughs> so, how's it going, man? You still haven't talked to me. And now I have become Vapor Snake. Leave me alone. Vapor Snake believes firmly in cootie theory. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's why he dresses like that. Maybe I can repel a girl with this. Quiet. It would work on some girls, that's for sure. Uh, maybe she, she doesn't. She doesn't approve of the anime box. All right. You know what? I got it. I got to be blunt about this. We're getting Didi back. By the way, Didi is the best of friends with us, which means we can customize yes! him. Yes. But he's perfect just the way he is. Oh, stealth dog. Yeah. Well, tactical doggy. And then Fox. Ah, uh, ah, uh, everything's a fucking fox. Everything's a fox. When you get down to it, I think this is really one of the most feminist games there is. <laughs> Because you can make your emblem say pro chick. <laughs> and I mean, that says it all right there. <laughs> yep. It's the most feminist thing possible. Pro chick. Oh, oh, me? I'm, I'm pro chick. Yeah, man. Oh, here he come. Aw. <laughs> uh, remember how we got uh, the Jahuti arm from that yes. bird? Yes. Uh, there's another Zone of the Enders related animal. Oh, good. Uh, it is a, uh, we have to capture a legendary jackal. <laughs> of course. That's the target. How do you fucking know, Miller? <laughs> Are you a jackal expert? Uh, you can get a bait bottle. Ooh. It's just a little bottle you throw that emits a scent that just lures animals and makes them stay in one spot. Um, and it makes it real easy to get the jackal. I don't remember if it works on birds, actually. I think it's only... I don't think it works on birds. Whoops. <laughs> oh, damn it. That is one legendary jackal. Yeah. Uh, Dee Dee didn't do it here, because I, I knocked the dog off, the jackal off too quick. But, uh, if you have Dee Dee with you, and mm -hmm. uh, a jackal, like, pounces on you and is trying to bite you, sometimes Dee Dee will run over and bite bite it and like drag it away from you and like snap its neck hell yeah that's my boy yeah we get some emblem parts related to anubis from zone of the enders uh Good dog. get a ton of heroism and stuff but on top of that we also unlock uh, a blueprint for a wormhole <laughs> uh anubis in Zone of the Enders 2, and 1, I guess, as well, was the one that originally uh, had the Zero Shift ability, which basically let it teleport. So, wormhole. You're not a lamb kind of guy? A hamburger is made of beef. You Philistine. <laughs> without beef. You yeah, beefed it by <laughs> not beefing <laughs> it. You, you fucking want. imbecile. Just give it a try. <sighs> Why do I waste my time? <laughs> the bugs that live inside me could make a better burger. Not bad. For a fucking idiot. <laughs> you really think people would eat that? What is it you are planning? Are you using me? <laughs> <laughs> A one-man focus group? Well, actually, I've already started. I got a place called uh, Miller's Maxi Buns. I cannot <laughs> condone your buffoonery. No, no, no. Our, our black budget's got it all covered. I'm not embezzling GMP or anything. <laughs> Still, uh, We've got a slush fund things, for okay? stupid things like this. <laughs> like the way Code Talker yeah, talks about like it's just chemicals. You just need the chemicals yeah. that taste fucking good. That Whether makes it sound like he is the dude who's good, who invented fucking Doritos. <laughs> like, <laughs> what came first, ranch or Cool Ranch? Tape worms in the raw meat of an 
another animal. And the secret the of the parasites is their creation of pink habitat. slime. Sometimes <laughs> even eating away at the brain in their confusion. I feel like we've gotten away so from talking about burgers, Code Talker. <laughs> Can we go back to my maxi buns? I fooled myself into thinking people today wanted high quality, all natural goods. <laughs> my favorite burgers were never about that. What they want is something like the first burger I had in America when I went to meet my dad. A Frankenburger loaded with additives. That's the America I knew and loved. I'll be back in a jiffy, old timer. My next burger's gonna knock your socks off. Kazuhira, wait. This tastes like ass. Is it is perfect. <laughs> Whoop! Uh, the wormhole is the best Fulton balloon you can use in the game because uh, okay. it has a 100% so success it. rate. Uh huh. Always. Um, and you don't have to have open air above you for the helicopter to grab them. You can you can float the people inside buildings because they could just get sucked through the wormhole. It's great. Whoop. I love it. Incredible. Mm -hmm. It does look like you might suffocate. Yeah, it does look like you're getting sucked into a void that has no oxygen. Who did this? A competitor. We don't know who. Can't pin down a route to their base. I'm guessing this is a cutscene that happens if uh, so someone does a base invasion on you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's there are a couple variations of the you got invaded cutscene. Uh, yeah, somebody invaded my base and they won. And mm -hmm. I wasn't able to, uh... I bet you feel like a big man out there on the internet, huh? <laughs> I know you're listening to me. I bet you, you feel like a real hard ass. Yeah. Psychic powers. Come on. You see the psychic powers! <laughs> you trudged through a ghost river. Bear with me a second. One type of ESP is telepathy. Literally just yesterday, you saw the psychic kid pass through a wall, and you know he makes the Metal Gear move. <laughs> Why are you suspending disbelief now? Eli got those kids to plot their armed uprising as a diversion. Also, he could steal the Holanthropus and escape. Yeah, kid loves Metal Gears. He's never going to get over that. When he was a young boy, he lost his native language, the bedrock for any developing child. His country, his family, his face, his identity. Don't expect us to feel bad for Skullface after no. everything involving no. Skullface. I will never <laughs> feel bad for Skullface. Like, yeah, that fucking sucks. But you know what? He did some shit. Okay, he I'm did some shit. He was gonna do some bad shit. Like, Skullface defected to the West. I do like this idea of like him as um, Snake's double. As far as their career goes, because like, yeah, yeah Skullface is going to be the top spy by killing all the other fucking spies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Big Boss is the top spy because he's just that good. And everybody's like, hey, you want some money so I can use you and your legend? Like, yeah, what the fuck ever, I don't care. <laughs> I like the idea of Skullface being the, the whole double. If I, I just wish he was written differently, just like his actual <laughs> character. He, uh, People talking about Skullface is pretty interesting. Skullface talking is just like, wow, man, <laughs> you gotta pace yourself. Yeah. Obviously, like every time a new Metal Gear came out, it was just like, all right, how do I fit more shit into this? Out of the mm -hmm. stuff I've already written, most of this was not planned. But like, if if they could have planned Skullface ahead of time and he had been foreshadowed this whole time, it would have been cool. What you're eating? Oh shit! Oh man, it's Galvez. You will come back, right? I mean, yeah, I got more pictures for you, but you don't want to <laughs> look at them right now, so I'll come back later. You want food? Do you eat? What do you think she does with the pictures? Huh? <laughs> Chemical additives. Mm. Gonna have some chemicals for lunch. It's just what a developing body needs, big <laughs> boss. God damn it. <laughs> Most of them probably gave up on the idea of family life when they joined. Still, it beats dying. 
from being a mutant all your life. Yeah, I guess it does. Uh, I just really had a lot of my self-identity tied up in my sperm for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. So there are like set points where soldiers can have conversations and sometimes I wanted like specific ones to show up and they just fucking wouldn't. <laughs> so I would just have to spend forever just w slowly watching dudes walk around and like if you get in a soldier's way and they're like, oh hey boss, and they see you sometimes that like prevents the conversation from ever happening so I have to like sneak around my own employees <laughs> so I can snoop on them. Yeah, yeah, you really are the big boss. <laughs> The boss has been going to that area under construction a lot lately. Yeah, saw him myself. There's something in there. He's probably just keeping tabs in the building. I've seen him watching us too. Don't let him catch us. You mean like up. right now? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him watching us, you know, right there. Hey, hi. What's up, boss? Hungry Gibbon, Madhound. I'm watching you. As you are well aware. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't a secret. I watch everyone. What's currently under construction? Uh, so... When you visit Paz, there's a room off the side that has a under construction sign there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah, go yeah. in that area, but yeah. I'm really curious if any ideas from Survive, or, uh, uh, Death Stranding made it into Survive somehow, in some form, even if it's a different execution, just because, like, Kojima s seems to have been doing work for Death Stranding all the way back in 2014, before MGS5 even came out, mm -hmm. uh, because there are times he was tweeting about, like, oh, I'm doing location scouting, and, like, they're all locations that are, like, straight up just in Death Stranding. And this is what you learn by watching those two-hour YouTube videos uh -huh. of the Kojima truthers, I see. It is just three days until beef day. Wait. I thought there were three days left before. I went and checked today's date with Miller and the professor. The day has not changed. It is the same day. Something is strange. Am I reliving the same day? Oh my god, watch out for Adam Sandler. You're not gonna like where this goes. <laughs> oh no! Well, that's familiar. Mm hmm. Man, old days, huh? How many times you gotta save your ass? <laughs> Jesus Christ, just make your fried eggs jiggle like boobies and get out of here. Who knows if it'll be like this in the, the final game when Death Stranding comes out, but uh, in previous gameplay stuff, Kojima is also in that game as well. He's just one of the weird black goop human people that comes out of the ground to grab Norman Reedus. Back to base. We're just doing side ops to just kind of pass the time so more story stuff triggers at this point. <laughs> I gotta play the game so the game will happen. Damn. Yeah. Oh, before I phone Kojima, I should have asked him to tell me everything about the ruse he's been doing for five years. <laughs> five year long plan. It turns out I actually hate Guillermo del Toro. Boss, we have an emergency. There's been another outbreak of the vocal cord parasites what? on the base. Several men are dead. God damn it. started in the laboratory on the quarantine Who didn't get neutered? First off, check how much the infection has spread. Rescue comes next, after we know the situation. When you're ready to move, just use the iDroid. <laughs> <laughs> do that video game thing you do. To be continued. <gasps> it's real again. It's real. Man, I love just naming video game missions with no chill. <laughs> Don't hold anything back. What the, are the parasites are now making skull puppets? Uh, yeah, maybe. Or psychic kid puppets? It sure would suck if this were the result of me fultoning a bunch of skulls onto the quarantine platform. <laughs> hey, maybe you can send your cloud of info uh, parasites down yeah. there. Yeah. Make your parasites fight the other parasites. They could do that, right? 
Parasite War. Why not? Symptoms. One who appears healthy. Maybe dying. On the inside. Same. What the hell happened in there? <laughs> Boss, I still can't raise the rescue team I sent in. Code Talker invented the big mood in 1984, <laughs> and the Patriots suppressed it. Not sure who in Metal Gear invented the big dick energy, but I'm sure somebody did it. <laughs> Vulcan was searching for it all the time. Oh my god, the philosophers held it, <laughs> hit it on microfilm. What's in this game more, the word copulation or Hideo Kojima? I think Kojima actually beats that out. What is it? I can't read, Kaz. Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We what the fuck have your burgers done? <laughs> Rubble Harrier, no! Mm, no. Mm. Don't know how yet. You made it way too hard to overhear conversations, so... I mean, more than varying, uh... activity, mm -hmm. this game seems a lot more interested in varying tone, because, like, it can't vary activity. It, it can't force your hand, or it's not this game anymore. Yeah. It's... it's... we're due for spooky time. Yeah. We're due for incredibly fucked up spooky time. Oh. Hmm. We're in, we're in Ger German? Yeah. And also, pretty much ev every time spooky stuff happens in this game, it's always associated with hospitals or medical stuff. Yes, yes. I mean, the opening, oh. Devil's House, and now here we are. Yeah. It appears even those who barely spoke became symptomatic. This must be some kind of mutation. If there was yet another weapon inside Paws, I swear to God. Oh my God, no. God, you get to the end of this and she's still her like happy, bubbly, <laughs> forgot her other self self. It's three days to peace day, Snake. Yeah, we're going to have to put you in like a chamber and just sink it to the bottom of the ocean, I think. <laughs> or, I don't know, put you wherever we put nuclear waste. See, that's what the problem. You're supposed to cover the bottom half of your face. <laughs> At least you're okay. What's going on? I, I win. I'm no snail. <sighs> what? <laughs> Is this all because you wanted a new code name? <sighs> I never even met this one. Fucking Mosquito 2 out here, screwing everything up for everybody. Oh, man. Never raise a weapon against one of your own. Oh, boy. Except in this case. believe no one in their right mind thought to try the three-man hug technique. <laughs> Big Boss's greatest weakness. We just rush him with 80 guys. Yeah. He can't stop all of us. You have to shoot, boss. We can't let them outside. <laughs> Damn it. We can't allow any contagious individuals to leave. Shoot, Snake. Oh, no. 
They get extra goony this way. Uh huh. So yeah, when you are killing Diamond Dog soldiers in this mission, you are killing the actual soldiers you have recruited throughout the game. You lose soldiers in this mission, no matter what. <laughs> I hope your stats were bad, <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know how they choose which soldiers get put in this mission, but like you pretty, I have pretty much always lost like a couple of S rank dudes. You expect me to just stand by and watch this? Huey just shut the fuck up. <laughs> just yeah. like no one asked you to come, Huey. Yeah. You're insane, Snake. He was one of your men. There's not much I could do for him, is there, Huey? <laughs> shut up. Huey, do you have an alternative plan? <laughs> yeah. Like, if you got one, fucking say because, it. Because because there is a chance the entire world is is killed by this parasite. Like, yeah. This is some serious shit right now. Huey, you put your kid in a, like, 800-ton piece of depleted uranium. Yeah. You're kidding, right? You yourself said we're a family! Or was it all lies? Kill me, boss. Kill me! Look! They agree with this, mostly. Like, <laughs> Huey! Opinion is split, to be fair. Yeah. There, there are some supporters of your plan here in the quarantine zone. Oh, you're not going to like his decision. And they're all fucking humming the Peace Walker theme. Oh my god. Oh, it's just the worst. It it fucks me up. Shooting your own men. Not the big boss I knew. Hang on, boss. Is he wearing a mask? He might not be infected. Examine him with those goggles. Yeah, of course, we can pick up the tape for the Peace Walker theme here. Because this is what you want uh, in this moment, a souvenir. <laughs> yeah. When the game happens, when yeah. the game decides to, to be a game, you yeah. know, it can really fucking go for it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a fucked up mission. It would be nice if there was like a point in the game or they really went for Goofy the same way they went for a couple different varieties of horror. Yeah. In the course of it. Yeah. You really only get the burger tapes. That's true.
S rank. All right. <laughs> Cypher found us by tracking our coffin purchases. <laughs> we have to move, boss. Strut isn't safe. We're going to have to have R&D develop our own coffins now. We'll bury them in space with our new wormhole technology. <laughs> it's your fault! Huey? They're dead because of you! No what? one invited you. He's right. I killed them with my own hands. They were on your side! I'm on your side! And you turned them all to ashes! Dude. Dude. <laughs> Taking you back to Route 101. They wanted you to shoot. It was that or be burned alive. Several of them gave express verbal consent. <laughs> Cookies. <laughs> My cookies. <laughs> I won't scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I think we know what we can make these burgers out of now. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. <coughs> oh. Might not be great to breathe in. This became a thing, like, right? Like, edits of this scene were huge and, like, the week after this game came out. Oh yeah, somebody edited this so he was rubbing Cheeto dust all over his yes. face. Or, uh, or Dorito dust. You're all diamonds. I thought this was in the beginning. <laughs> because of that, I thought, like... Yeah. We're not burying them at sea. What then? Put them in a nuke. We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. A shining light to our brothers in arms, even in death. We are diamond dogs. Somebody at Konami read one of those stories about people turning their dogs into diamonds, like, yeah. <laughs> Diamond dogs. Hell yeah. I got the idea because Barbara Streisand cloned her dogs. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that whole chunk of the game uh, is great. I really like this part a lot. Mm-hmm. It's some of the most character we've gotten out of the boss in a long, long time. Oh, absolutely. Like... You actually get a sense for, like, how he feels about stuff in this mission. Oh no!